Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So, I've already covered this in a previous video um, where I do body work um, for the front of this scooter. It's right over, over there, some of the work that I did. And I do plan on finishing up the body work. There's a little bit more work that needs to be done, not just on the front fairing, um, but also in the, uh, the rear portion where the uh, turn signals are and the brake light and everything. But today, I wanted to uh, get this scooter up and running. It's sat for a couple of winters and it just needs a tune-up and so I'm going to try to figure out what's keeping it from running. So if this type of stuff interests you, stick around and we'll see if I can get this thing to run. Now for those of you that followed the, uh, the Honda Spree uh, work that I did, uh, these Honda Elites, this is an Elite 50, an Elite E, these are actually just the updated version of the Honda Spree. And so they are pretty much constructed exactly the same. They just have updated plastics and updated, uh, sp you know, speedometer and a little bit, uh, generally just a little bit fancier. So the battery is located under, under the seat and it is dead. So I have to get a charger on this. Uh, before I can really start testing it out and cranking on it. It shouldn't take long to get it up to where I can start uh, turning it over and trying to get it to fire up. How would that focus? Hmm. So I'm getting this as a response from my charger. If you can read it, it says dead battery. It's not really a good sign. It was uh, right around 6 volts when I hooked it up, so I'm going to try to figure out a way to get this to charge. I've got a really old charger. Here, you'll come on a journey with me. I've got this really old battery charger here that is not smart at all. It just pumps in voltage. I might be able to restore the battery that way. If not, we'll be looking at a new battery for this thing. I doubt they're expensive. It almost looks like it's popped its top too, so we'll see. Okay, I already got the battery all charged up and I've pulled off the air cover. And I'm just going to give it a couple hits with some starting fluid. I don't want to run it too much on starting fluid because that would mess up the cylinder walls. This is a two stroke so the oil is carried in the fuel and starting fluid has no oil in it. Therefore it could dry out the cylinder and uh, score it up pretty bad. So let's see what it does here. Well, we know it'll start at least, but it does die. I'm guessing there's an issue with the fuel system, most likely the carburetor, because nine times out of ten it's the carburetor, and then the other 10% of the time it's something fuel related. So I'm going to have to pull this cover off right here and uh, so I can access the carburetor. I'm probably going to yank the carburetor. I'm going to check the petcock and make sure I got fuel flow to the carburetor and then I'll probably end up taking the carburetor apart and cleaning it because this has probably not been cleaned in forever. <clears throat> Here's the uh, foam filter material and it's just it's falling apart it's kinda disintegrating so I don't think anybody's been in, inside there for a long time possibly the reason it's disintegrating is somebody tried to spray some starting fluid in there with this still in place and the starting fluid would definitely melt this foam so you don't want to do that um, I'm gonna take the cover off and get right back to you guys okay so before I break into the carburetor I'm going to test the pet cock the way the pet cock works is it runs off the vacuum that's created when the engines running 
So this tube right here is a vacuum tube, and when a vacuum is pulled on this tube, it opens up a small di diaphragm and allows the gasoline to flow through this tube, which fills the carburetor. So in order to test it, what you have to do is you have to suck on this tube, and it's kind of like some type of a twisted trust exercise here. And you better make sure you, you've got the right tube that you're pulling the vacuum on, or you'll get a nasty surprise in your mouth. So here we go. Oh yeah. Now it won't stop. Okay. Well, th it did work for a minute, so um, I don't know what to do now. Make sure, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to pop this back on the carburetor for now, and um, I don't know. Maybe it just needed to be broken open, um, and so I'll put this, now that it's flowing freely, I will put this back on the carburetor and I will try to start it again and hopefully I don't flood the thing now because this thing is flowing like crazy. Oh, okay, so it stopped. Oh, I'm sure my arm's right in the way too, isn't it? That's great. All right, pop these hoses back on here. I'm gonna tr give it another shot now. Might might help it out a little bit again. to me like it's running now. I'm going to let it run for a little bit here. I just closed my garage door. I'm going to have to open it again. Right, it's dying. Okay, it died. So it ran for longer that time. I'm going to start it back up, try to start it back up without starting fluid, and then I'm going to rev it and see if I can't get some fuel moving through that line. That battery is pretty weak. I'm not going to tax it too much more. Um, I'm since I'm already in here and I'm still having some type of a fuel distribution issue. I'm going to go ahead and pull the carburetor off and just clean it really, really good. Um, you know, kind of clean up this whole area. I am preparing this for sale, so it just would be in my best interest to get this as clean as possible. And then when I put it back together, I can tune it all up and hopefully get it uh, running in tip-top condition. So. I'm going to pull this off and once I get it off I'll bring you guys back and we'll take it apart together. Okay, I think I'm going to hit this thing with a few shots of carb cleaner just to try to get some of this filth off of here. It is just covered in grit and grime. You know, it's... I'm thinking maybe there's an inner fender inside this uh, scooter that might be missing. Because in the sprees, they're around the back tire, because the tire is right next to the carburetor, okay? I guess the carburetor is facing this way, and the tire is right here. And you have this inner fender that keeps the tire from throwing dirt up into this area. But this doesn't have anything like that, and as you can tell, it's just filthy. On another note, you know, I'm not familiar with this 
type of carburetor. It's got some weird bypass circuit right here. It's got some type of circuit that's open to the air right here. And then obviously you have your drain here. There's something else going on right here. I don't know if I if I accidentally yanked it out or if it's just missing. But the fuel line goes here and then the oil injection is right here. Can you guys see where I'm pointing? Sorry. Fuel line goes in straight into here that connects to the throttle. The oil injection comes into the side of the throttle here. That big black plastic thing that was in here, that's the auto choke. And um, I don't know, let's clean this up a little bit and then take it apart. There's got to be something that should be protecting the carburetor from getting this dirty. It's pretty bad. I don't think that that even though it is filthy, I don't think that is what caused the run issues that we're seeing here. Wow, this thing is stiff, like plastic, like hard plastic. Alright, well, let's just get this, start taking this apart. Will I or won't I tear the gasket here? I did not. It's a miracle. Hey, everything inside here looks pretty good. Bowl's clean. Floats clean. No obvious corrosion, which is nice. It looks like it didn't ever come into contact with water inside here. I'm going to pull everything out. Um, get the needle out here and um, I'm gonna locate my carburetor cleaning can and I'm gonna take out the jets, there's the needle let me get a small screwdriver real quick Pull out the main jet. I might, I might be able to get the emulsion tube out. I don't want to. Oh yeah, that's nice and loose in there. Maybe. I'm going to have to persuade it. There she is. Very clean. So despite how filthy it was on the outside, it sure looked it looks clean on the inside. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take the idle screw out. And I'm going to try to get the air fuel mix screw out. And I'm going to get these extra hoses off, and then I will dunk it. I'll probably, I don't know, I might leave that gasket in there. I'm afraid of tearing it. Everything else has been in such good condition. I think I'm going to leave it. I ended up 
pulling that seal out there. The seals are in really good condition, almost as if it may have been serviced not too long ago. When we bought this scooter, it was in pristine condition from the previous owner. We're the ones that did all the damage to it. Basically, it was people learning learning how to ride and making all the mistakes associated with that learning process. All right, I'm going to let that soak for a while and then after, you know, we'll pull it out and maybe uh in an hour or so. Okay. So it's actually the next day. I didn't intend to soak these overnight, but that's just how it happens sometimes. As usual, it's always a good sign when the float is still floating. Let's try to empty out everything here. Dry these off a little bit. Okay, so far as I can tell, everything looks really good. Um, leaving it in the carb cleaner for overnight took the shine off of the aluminum. I'm not too concerned about that, but you can see um, how it's probably not advisable to leave it in there too terribly long. I've experienced this before, <coughs> where um, back before I knew anything, uh, I was working on a classic motorcycle that I have yet to show you guys and I left some aluminum parts in some very aggressive carb cleaner. This is like 20 years ago where the carb cleaner was a lot more toxic than it is today and you could see just like almost like a aluminum crystals just leaching out of the parts. I was afraid I had ruined them but I was able to salvage them. So you do have to be a little careful with the amount of time you expose these parts to this carb cleaner. <clears throat> I'm trying to look at the directions here. It really says um, 15 to 30 minutes, maximum of 4 hours. So. Definitely something to keep in mind. I got uh, a little indisposed last night, and so I ended up having to leave it till this morning. And I don't think there's any ill effects, but there's potential for causing damage if you're not careful and you leave it in there for too long. This looks like it's all going to clean up just fine. And long-term exposure to this carburetor cleaner doesn't seem to have any negative effect on the plastic, this hard plastic, and the brass parts. It appears to only affect the aluminum. I was able to take the seals out before I, uh, I put it in, because it probably would have affected the seals. Drop the seal in first. Okay. 
I do like these um, needle and float setups where the this little hinge pin um, you don't have to thread it through any holes or anything it's held down with a screw it, I feel like it just makes things a little bit more convenient it's hard enough getting everything threaded in there or whatever get everything hung in there the right way as you can see you can watch me struggle while I try to do this in the field of the camera uh. Do the old, I call this the old musty one test. When it's upside down, you shouldn't be able to blow through this. But when it's right side up, you should be able to. So there we go. That shows that the needle and seat works. Oops, I need a spring. out I'm sure it'll go in these things like to run a little tighter on the screw than what the standard two turns is <clears throat> put in my emulsion tube like that my main jet wrong way Idle screw. No idea where that needs to be at the moment. Bowl. Okay, time to get this guy installed back onto the scooter and let's hope it made a difference. Alright, I got the carburetor mostly put all back together. You know, I just got a couple of uh, covers that go on the auto choke that need to go back on, but that they just slide on. So what I did was uh, I double checked the petcock to make sure it operated properly, and it does. And I charged the battery. I don't, this battery seems like it's not doing too great, so it may need to be replaced soon. I set the idle just kind of arbitrarily, and I turned the, the air fuel mix screw in all the way and just opened it a half turn. My experience with these types of two cycle engines is that uh, they don't need a whole heck of a lot of fuel. Um, if you have that screw open too far it will bog down and f I guess flood itself maybe. So anyway we're gonna give it a shot here. Um, one second let me lock I'm going to lock the brake into position
So as you can see from that footage, I just tried to run it and it definitely bogs under any type of load. When it's uh, running on its stand, it runs just fine. So uh, I'm going to try a couple things real quick. And if those little easy fixes don't work, I'll probably end up taking the carburetor back off and making sure I don't have a, like a clogged main vent or something, or clogged main jet or something like that. All right, um, that fixed it. It's wanting to die right now. I've got the idle, I think, set a little too low. Oops. I gotta let the, uh, I gotta use two hands to turn it on, so I have to set you guys down. Well, maybe you guys caught it before I did, but um, with these little two-stroke engines, the amount of air that's brought in is definitely important, and since I had the air cover off, it was letting in too much air, and that's what was killing me. So as you saw with the footage uh, right before this, uh, everything's running good. I used a GPS speedometer because I don't have a working speedometer on this yet. And it gave me, a re it registered around 30 miles an hour, which is probably all I can expect out of this, this little guy here. <clears throat> so, what's next is I am going to have to take apart this whole front fairing and uh, figure out what's going on with the speedometer because the speedometer linkage down at the wheel hub is fine so I'm assuming there's something wrong with uh, the way it's interfacing up here and hopefully the speedometer cable isn't broken uh, not that that's a huge deal or anything uh, you can just order a new one but you know it takes time to wait for that to ship so I'm gonna pop this guy back up on the lift clear off kind of the mess I've got going on right now and uh, start taking apart this front section here. Okay, so years ago I've been into this in the past. Um, it's kind of, if I remember correctly, it's a little difficult to get apart. I actually replaced this whole part here. If you look really closely, I don't know if the lighting will allow you to see it. There's scratches on the headlight. The scooter experienced a pretty significant crash, and I'm doing some of the body work in another video. So here's that body work in progress. I've got some fiberglass on the inside of the, the front fairing here. But that is the subject of another video. What I want to do now is get this taken apart and get access to the speedometer and figure out what's going on with the speedometer cable. So I'm going to pull this off first. There's a couple screws under here holding it in, and I believe the uh, turn signals are also holding it in. So I didn't have to end up having to take off this front piece. I just forgot how this one comes apart. You actually take off the back gray portion that the speedometer is attached to. So 
This is where the speedometer cable meets the speedometer. Try to get the focus. There we go. Right there. And then it goes down. The cable runs all the way down into this linkage right here. And so the problem is going to be with either one of these. I already had checked this one, but I'm going to check it again. Um, I'm actually going to take both ends out and spin the cable to see if it spins on both ends because if it only spins on one end that tells me that the speedometer cable's broken. Let me just unscrew the speedometer cable here at the top. And I can already tell that the spline here is not extended far enough to where it would be able to mesh with the small um, gear or whatever it is inside here. So that's interesting. I'll have to see what's going on out here. It's possible that this may not be inserted far enough. There's kind of a gap between the end of the the speedometer cable and the housing and I'm thinking that maybe maybe this housing goes deeper in or this cable goes deeper into this housing so let me grab my my trusty generic screwdriver here <clears throat> and loosen this up maybe all right, I'm going to do this off camera because I don't want to ruin that screw. All right, if you look down in there, you'll see the little slot that interfaces with There's this little spline inside there. I was going to try to set this up so you can see. Let's see if I can set my camera here so you can watch. It's going to be a little out of focus because it's a little close but hopefully you'll be able to see. If I wiggle that spline down there you should be able to see the end wiggling where it interfaces with the speedometer. So that tells me the speedometer cable is good. It just seems a little seems like the inner portion of the cable is a little shorter than the outer portion. Like somehow the, the outer portion, the housing of the cable got stretched or something, but I, I seriously doubt that. So we're going to try to put everything together and try to make it fit. Okay, I figured it out. I'll try to explain it to you guys. This spring right here, this is the inside of the speedometer cable. This is the part that actually spins. This is the outer housing of the cable right here. Okay, As you can see, it's pretty stiff all the way down the length of the cable until we get to the end here. Look at this. This is the end of the, the housing of the cable. It's supposed to extend all the way into this termination here. So the outer rubber casing has stretched and when it did that it created an extra length inside the whole housing which made the housing too long for the internal portion of the speedometer cable. So I think what I need to do, I mean we're looking at this much extra space. So I'm going to try to stretch it all back into position and hopefully you can see it's wrinkling as I do that but hopefully when I do that, um, it will get everything the right length again. You can see that the outer casing actually consists of two parts. There is the actual speedometer cable rigid casing and then there is a rubber cover. And that rubber cover is connected to the termination. So, if I peel back the rubber cover on this end, just as I suspected, this just comes loose. This should be connected to the other end of this. Hopefully this is all in focus. I know I'm really close to the camera. So what I need to do is work the outer rubber 
over back, I, I'm, I'm suspecting that this part needs to be all the way up to here and then we'll make up that much space in the speedometer cable. Now you can see the other end of the rigid portion of the cable is poking out here. And uh, maybe I went a little too far because this is supposed to connect here like that and then that's supposed to slide over it and leave that much behind. Um, as far as excess. What I'm going to do I think to just make sure this doesn't happen again is I think I'm going to electrical tape everything um, to make sure it doesn't slide around and then force me to lose my speedometer again. Okay, I've, I've electrical taped the termination to the rigid housing and now I'm going to slide the rubber housing over that and I'm going to electrical tape that to the termination and also tape the rubber housing to the rigid housing on the uh, speedometer side. Okay now with both ends taped up it's ready to be reinstalled back into the motorcycle. Well I got her all back together. Um, I have to take it out for a ride still to verify that the uh, speedometer is fixed. I'm not sure it is. It still seemed a little short, like something may still be stretched out. Um, so, um, I don't know. If it, it hasn't fixed it yet, I might just buy a whole new cable because this one has been taped together and it could probably just use it. So I'm going to take it out for a quick ride and see if that speedometer works. And if it doesn't, I'll just have to uh, order some parts and fix it on another day. But as far as the mechanical side of things, I'm pretty much done. So what I plan on doing next is I plan on putting a, together a video of uh, the body work that I'm doing on this scooter. Um, I'll go into some depth about it. The, the material that they use to build these plastic fairings was, was very brittle or is very brittle. And so I'll talk a little bit about that in the next video and go over some of these repairs that I did and some extra stuff that I plan on doing for this. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, send me a comment below if you have any questions. I read every comment that's made and I hope uh, to see you guys next time. See you later.